Hey guys, my name is Jordan and welcome back to another edition of Trainer Chats provided by J-Dog Obedience, where I sit and try to answer all of your guys' burning questions about dog training, dog behavior, and anything else that you might need help with. This little series of videos that I'm going to record today um, is going to cover all of the things that I would normally cover in one of my puppy kindergarten classes, as well as try to answer some of the most common questions that I get from people, especially when working with puppies. So today's first lesson is going to be all about puppy handling and things that you can do to help get your dog more comfortable when going to the veterinarian office or going to the groomer. As some of you probably know, or are already very well aware of, dogs don't always do great when they're going to the vet's office or to the groomers. And the reason for this is because you, as an owner, haven't taken the time to teach them that a lot of the things that it, they are going to encounter while they're there are okay. If you think about a dog going to the vet or to the groomer for the very first time, there's a lot of new things happening for them. First, more than likely, they're in an environment that they've never been in. Second, there's a lot of people that they've never met that want them to do a bunch of things that they've never done. Third, they're getting exposed to all sorts of new tools, pieces of equipment, environments. It's a very, very stimulating thing for your puppy. Then you have to figure that a lot of things that happen to them in those environments in their mind are not positive. Um, you know, getting a thermometer up your bum, having some guy you don't know shove stuff inside your ears and like crank your mouth open, getting shots, um, you know, going to a groomer, they're getting their nails trimmed, they're getting their ears cleaned, they're getting their teeth brushed, baths, brushed. They're getting all these things that they would never really get in a home environment. So as an owner, if you do certain things to help them get more comfortable prior to going there, it can make their first experiences much more positive, which will then make it easier for you as the owner, as well as your vet and your groomer moving forward. So the very first step in this is to start handling your puppy at a very young age. I know you're probably thinking, well, duh, Jordan, that's why I'm watching this training video. But when I'm talking about dog handling in this scenario, I'm not talking about dog handling training necessarily. I'm talking about you getting your hands on your dog. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of the handling exercises that I would normally do with a puppy. Uh, that way you can get a good idea of what I mean when I say handling. So let's say that this is your puppy. Um, let's think about the ways that you would normally pet a dog. Maybe on their chest, petting their head, stuff like this. Maybe just barely stroking their ears and stuff. So if we're getting a dog ready to go to the veterinarian, some things that we're going to want to do is start handling their ears a lot more. So maybe go do stuff like this and give their ears really just slight, gentle tugs. Maybe work your fingers down into the canal of their, like just barely into the base of their ear canal, just so that they can get used to that part of their body being touched without it being any sort of negative experience. Let's go ahead, just run our hands gently over their faces so they learn that that's okay. Then we're gonna take their lips and just barely peek up into their teeth like this. Again, we don't wanna force our dogs to do things, but we just want them to get used to all those handling. So, you know, keep being dramatic about it. Put your fingers in their mouths, around their ears, stuff like that. That way, as the vet is trying to handle their head, check their teeth, stuff like that, they're not freaking out and thrashing all around. Next, we're going to work our way right down to their neck. Now, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but dogs in nature do not have collars on. <laughs> so a lot of them don't respond great when you put a collar on for the first time. So this is another opportunity for you to not only get your dog comfortable wearing a collar, but also teaching a dog how to apply, how to um, shut pressure off when it's applied to their neck. For whatever reason, um, sometimes dogs, if they feel pressure on their neck, their immediate reaction is to pull into it. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen a dog try to kill themselves on a grooming table. It's terrifying. They feel that pressure from the chain and they just decide, all right, <laughs> they just completely lean into it. Uh, my dog Bruce is one of those dogs actually. 
So what I'm going to teach them from a very young age is how to shut that pressure on their neck off. And the only thing I'm going to do is put their collar on their neck and then I'm just going to slowly grab it. So I'll put my fingers in there and just apply very light pressure on that dog's collar. What I don't want to see is him start throwing a tantrum. If your dog starts throwing a tantrum for any reason, let them throw it. Especially if you know that the dog isn't actually in pain, they're just trying to get away from something that you want them to do. Um, dogs, very much like toddlers in that respect, if they throw a tantrum once and they figure out that it works and that they no longer have to do what you want after that, they're going to keep throwing tantrums. So if I have the collar on my puppy and I grab onto his collar and he immediately starts freaking out, I'm just going to let him. I'll let him barrel roll. I'll let him try to bite me. I'll let him do whatever the heck he wants until he stops. The second that my dog stops and offers me a nice calm behavior, I'm going to let go and I'm going to reward him for that. Whether I'm giving him treats, whether I'm petting him, whatever it is. While he's throwing out, I'm not going to do a darn thing except for hold on to his collar. I'm just going to sit there and wait until he figures out that throwing a fit is not going to get him what he wants. And I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm going to apply pressure from every different angle to his collar and I'm going to let him learn that in order to get that pressure off, he needs to relax and release that pressure himself. Like I was saying, not only is this going to get them used to having pressure on their neck from different um, angles, it's going to give your vet or you know, your groomer or whoever else the ability to grab your dog and like guide them if need be without them freaking out. The other thing this is going to do is it's going to translate really nicely to when we start working on healing and stuff um, because the dog has already learned how to shut that pressure off of their collar. So from there, we're going to keep working our way down their body. While you're doing this, another thing I encourage you to do is to check for um, just the general feeling of your dog's body. That way, as the dog gets older, um, if you keep doing exercises like this, which I highly recommend you do, it will give you the op opportunity to spot things like uh, lumps that might grow or masses, or if your dog has a cut, maybe he has an injury, something like that. The more you handle your dog as a puppy, the more likely it is that they're gonna let you investigate those things when they're older. Additionally, it gives you a tool as an owner to maybe start identifying those things early so that if you do find a lump or a mass or something like that, you can get help sooner rather than later before it progresses into something that you can't fix. So, like I said, the more handling, the better, um, the more comfortable your dog is with you and other people touching them in strange ways, the better off you're going to be. So, that being said, the next thing that you're going to want to do to help your dog get used to those new environments, um, especially the groomer and the vet, is getting them used to standing on a tabletop that doesn't have anything underneath. This is something that a lot of owners don't even think about. Um, and it's a very easy thing to teach your dog to be okay with if you do it properly. Dogs inherently do not like to be on any sort of platform or um, stair even. A lot of dogs won't go upstairs that have an open back and it's because they can see that there's nothing underneath their feet. So if we take the time to teach them from a young age that it is okay to be on a platform or stair or anything like that where there's nothing below, it will help them from freaking out later in the future. Um, it'll also help keep your dog from being afraid of stairs. I don't know, maybe jumping onto trucks, stuff like that. So <clears throat> you can do this in a variety of different ways, whether you just have a small end table or maybe you have a card table or a card out in your garage. I wouldn't recommend necessarily using a table in your house, such as your kitchen table or your counter, just because we don't want our dogs to get comfortable with the idea of being on our kitchen table or counter. But like I said, if you have like just a little end table or something like that, it's just a puppy. So you can easily put them up there, get them comfortable being up there. And then what I want you to do, keep doing those handling exercises with their collar on the table, do the handling exercises with them on the table. And then I also want you 
to get the dog used to the idea that if they start acting a fool, they will fall off that table. So the only thing I'm gonna do is support my dog. I'm gonna take them to the edge of that table and I'm gonna let their feet fall off the edge a little bit. Not a lot, obviously I'm not gonna like dangle my dog over the edge, uh, you know, like Mufasa, but <laughs> um, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach them that when they get to the edge, there is an edge. And so the calmer they are on the table, the safer that they're gonna be. So I'll just move them to the edge, let their foot dangle off, you know, move them away, bring them to the side edge, let their foot fall off, stuff like that. And I'm just gonna get them as comfortable as possible on that tabletop. Now, on that note, let's start talking about grooming a little bit. So when it comes to grooming, one of the, I would say probably the two areas where I see people that struggle the most are people with um, dogs who have human style hair like mine that don't take care of it properly and end up with a lot of mats and people who either don't cut their dog's nails or have waited so long to cut their dog's nails that it has created a health problem or they created a negative association with cutting their nails and now their dog just freaks out. So the first thing that we'll discuss is um, dogs with hair like mine. This is going to um, be pretty much 90% of toy breeds. These are your Lhasa Apsos, your Shih Tzus, uh, long-haired Dachshunds, Yorkies, any sort of poodle and or doodle breed. They are all going to need a lot of coat upkeep. Now what this means is in addition to going to the groomer frequently, probably at least monthly, maybe six weeks tops, you should be brushing your dog at home every single day from their skin all the way to the edge of their hair. A common, so let's say that this is the dog's hair. Down here is where it meets the skin, right? At my shirt is where it meets the skin. What we see a lot is people who brush their dog from like here up and think that they're good because they still have a little bit of coat and hair to like, you know, play with and run their fingers through and stuff like that. The issue is the part of the dog's fur that needs brush the absolute most is the part that sits right against the skin because that's the part that's gonna get matted. Now, when I say mats, what I mean is the hair down at the bottom will start to get knotted and create knots. And as it does that, what happens is it just keeps pulling and pulling and pulling and clumping together more and more and more like this. So eventually, um, your dog's skin that was laying nice and flat like that is now laying like this, all crumpled in a mess because their hair is pulling on it in all sorts of unnatural directions. So especially, especially for those of you that want to get a doodle, please do not get a doodle unless you are a willing to brush that dog entirely every single day to prevent it from matting and b willing to go to the groomers at least every six weeks to make sure that their coat is staying healthy and manageable otherwise if you allow your dog's coat to get matted um, they're going to be in a lot of physical pain uh, we see dogs all the time will shave them down. They eventually have to get sheared like sheep because those mats will just keep spreading and spreading and spreading. And it gets so tightly pulled to the skin that you have no other option but to just shave it all off. We see dogs um, with massive sores on their skin because it's been pulling for so long. We see dogs uh, that get cut. Sometimes we can't even get the fur off. Um, sometimes it has to go all the way, all, all the way down to the skin. Um, imagine what that's like for a dog, um, especially a dog that's never been groomed before. Now he's sitting on the table for three and a half hours getting shaved all the way down to the skin because he has a mat that covers his entire body. Um, this is very, very common. I've seen it before where we've shaved dogs and literally it looks like a bathrobe that you could throw on the ground because it has all become so knotted and tangled together that it can't be separated at all. So. If you are going to get one of those breeds of dogs, please do your homework and make sure that you are taking care of their coat the way that it needs to be taken care of. That being said, if you have one of those dogs, introducing them to grooming equipment at an early age is going to be even more important. So introducing them to the brush, to combs, clippers, um, what else? 
a blow dryer. A lot of dogs have never been exposed to a blow dryer before. If you don't crate train your dog, you're setting them up for a failure um, at the vet and for grooming purposes because a lot of them get put in a crate with a blow dryer on them. So now if you have a dog that's scared of a crate and a blow dryer, pretty much the most traumatic experience of their life, right? So the more you prepare your dog prior to going to the vets or the groomers, the better it's going to be. Now let's move on to nail trimming because I feel like this is something that most people struggle with at one point or another with their dog. So nail trimming is something that I think that everybody should be doing with their dog from the first time that they bring them home. Within a week of having a dog at your house, you should be trip or you should be clipping their nails, okay? Now I hear a lot of people that get nervous because they don't want to cut too deep or whatever, whatever. But the thing about puppy nails um, is that you don't have to cut off very much to start building that positive association. Everybody in the world knows that puppy teeth and nails are like the sharpest things in the world. They're like little razor blades just out there to get you with love, you know? And uh, so with puppies, you can use fingernail clippers just like you would for a human and just barely cut off the very razor sharp tip of their nails. And even that is going to be a good starting point to get your dog used to getting their nails trimmed. Um, you can do one paw a day that way like you can kind of spread it out keep giving your dog the opportunity to get their feet handled to get their nails clipped for you to build that association with it and the more times you do it the better off you're going to be now if you have a dog that really hates to have his feet touched or whatever um, or maybe you've already accidentally gotten a negative association built with trimming their nails and those nail clippers, the very first step that you're going to do is start handling your dog's feet in situations when you're not going to immediately um, cut their nails. A lot of dogs, the only time that anybody ever touches their feet is when their nails are getting clipped. So they figure out pretty quickly that anytime you touch their feet, it's going to be negative for them. So the very first step is just going to be building a positive association with you handling their feet in a situation where they're not going to get their nails clipped immediately afterwards. So maybe you're just watching TV, maybe they're sleeping on your lap, just play with their toes, get them used to you putting your fingers between their pads, moving their feet all around, um, even doing like this sorts of stuff with like their ankles and their bones and stuff like that. You just want your dog to be completely comfortable with you touching their feet. From there, what you're going to do is go ahead, get your clippers out, and set them in an environment where your dog can see them and keep playing with their feet. That way, the dog sees the clippers, he knows that they're there, but you're still touching his feet and he's not having to deal with the clippers. So again, he's learning that just because you're touching his feet does not necessarily mean that something bad is going to happen to him. From there, we're going to start playing with our puppy's feet while we have the clippers in our hands. Because again, we're still just building that positive association. Now the clipper is in our hands, we're touching their feet, nothing bad is still happening to the dog. Then once you can get to the point that your dog is letting you handle their feet pretty regularly and you have the clippers in your hand, we're gonna start by just clipping one nail at a time. So again, it's very, very positive the entire time. You're handling their feet, blah, blah, blah. You clip one of their nails, and then you're done. Um, so yes, something that they didn't like did happen at the end of that. However, they remained calm. They were safe. Everything was good throughout it. And you got one of their nails clipped. So it can be a slow process, um, but rebuilding that association, that positive association is going to make it so much easier for you to do other things in the future with your dog that it's really worth doing. Um, one thing I see a lot, and it's not a bad thing, um, def like I definitely don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's better than the people who like put muzzles on it and call in all the vet techs and they like hold them down and clip all their nails real quick. Um, I see a lot of people who will try to do like the put peanut butter on their head or the table or something like that to try and keep the dog distracted throughout the entire time that they are cutting their nails. Now, while I think that this is a more positive approach than obviously holding the dog down, 
distracting your dog while you do something that they don't like to them um while it works it's not really teaching them that they have nothing to be afraid of in the first place yes it is a positive way to do something however it's also kind of the lazy and easy way out i don't want to trick my dog i want my dog to know that in an any environment that they are safe and that they are going to be safe with me as long as they don't freak out right um the key to getting a dog to not freak out in situations is that they have to know that they're safe and they have to feel comfortable in that situation so if they can't look at you and know that you are that safety for them they're never going to be able to relax no matter what you do with them or try to trick them so that's why I always, always, always recommend trying to go back and rebuild that positive association with the clippers instead of just trying to distract your dog while you do something to them that they do not like. Teach them that it's okay. Teach them they don't have to be afraid and teach them that as long as they're with you, they're going to be safe and nothing is going to happen to them. Then it'll make all your other training easier and it'll make you from having to fight your dog and it will reassure you that when you take them to the vets and the groomers and stuff like that, that your dog isn't going to be acting a fool and that you won't have to worry about, you know, anybody else using adverse things to get your dogs to do the things that they need them to do. So hopefully that gave you guys some good information about handling and some ways that you can set your dog up to be more successful when he goes to places like the groomer and the veterinarian's office. As always, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to drop them below. Otherwise, I highly encourage you to check out some of my other videos and happy dog training. I'll talk to you later. Bye guys.